Yeah. yeah I mean, we're, we're on a similar mission. I know uh, something that is you're also passionate about is Entrepreneur's Day. Yep. Uh, we, we've been Black in, Entrepreneur's Day. Yeah, let's Man, talk about that for a little bit. <sighs> Black Entrepreneur's Day. I was sitting around in 2020, like most of us, and I was watching... I was watching the TV and these kids were burning buildings instead of burning businesses instead of building businesses. And I said, I was there in 1992 when, or whenever that was, when Ronnie King was choked and I wanted to go out there and burn businesses too. But I realized that empowering myself was the only way I was gonna get out of this situation and make other people respect me. I gotta find a way to band us together. And so I was feeling helpless like most people and I was watching TV and our government was not stepping up and I was seeing a lot of things. And I said, you know what? What is a true entrepreneur do? Let me call my assets. Let me call uh, brands I know. Hey, guys, who wants to get together and create something to give away money to people in need during this time? Let me call all the celebrities. I know. Let me call Shaquille O'Neal and Bob Johnson and Ice-T and LL Cool J and talk about how the times we have failed and overcame it and we were in that same frustrating space in our lives. I did it online. Next thing you know, I give away $250,000 grants, give it away uh, to a bunch of businesses. Uh, I have people on the marquee like Shopify and the general and Shay saying we're standing by with this man about empowering African Americans. Next thing you know, I do it at the Apollo next year, the next year. Now I'm on my fourth year of giving away almost a million dollars uh, to black businesses. Um, a bunch of black businesses have applied for these grants. These are it's free money. I, I, I'm now at the Apollo Theater and I do it every single year. Uh, I went from, I went from um, you know, watching the Sandman and all those guys on the Apollo Theater in the 70s and 80s to then standing outside with my little table and my hats and my partners trying to sell stuff in the 90s to getting a seat in it maybe in 2000s and now booking it out for, the, for two full days to give away money to African Americans who hopefully because of now social media and all this stuff, their businesses, they can hit a billion people. They're gonna be bigger and better than Damon John ever was, right? And uh, you know, and, and this is something I do every year. And unfortunately, money money's drying up. My sponsors are all staying by me, my Chase, my Shopify, you know, my my Lowe's, uh, you know, and the ones who did. But most of these other ones who were like, yo, yo yeah, we have this initiative <laughs> and all that. They ain't messing with us no more. Wait till the next time somebody catches it on film. Because you know what's happening every night. Mm -hmm. The next time it's on film, they're going to be like, oh, yo, D, what's happening? Still got that thing? Huh? You still got that thing you was yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what about that black entrepreneur? How, yeah. how, how you doing out there? But the ones who stick by me are sticking by me. The one, you know, the gentleman like you who, uh, if you don't talk to Chauncey, we could have been talking about this for three years, <laughs> who support me. Well, speaking of support, last question I'll ask is, obviously you've been an iconic figure in our culture, um, but how do you feel about your legacy, especially when it comes to black media? I believe you've never been on any... Um, front pages of any publication, <laughs> stuff like that. Do you think about that stuff or how, 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 what's your thoughts on? on yeah, I, I think I think somebody shared that with you. you know, I have not been on the cover of any black magazine ever. Um, I have the top, I have the number one selling cover on Inc and the number four selling cover on Inc. I've been on Inc three times, I think. Success Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine. Um, I've never been on the cover of any African-American magazine. Um, I think that it is, um, and it's not because I need to be, right? I'm on, uh, Shark Tank reruns on CNBC 60 times a week. I am the Kardashians of CNBC. I don't, I don't have any shortage of attention for me. Now to qualify that statement, I should not be on the cover of a music magazine. I should not be on the cover of a sports magazine, right? Um, I do think that those magazines, if they're gonna put Beyonce on the cover, uh, and I know cover space is important. Put the inside story of Beyonce's amazing uh, team behind her, right? And that's the way we show, uh, or LeBron, uh, put Maverick and a lot of people in between because I want every single kid out there to say, if I can't be at Beyonce, I'm gonna be around her because I could be her lawyer, you know, I could be her manager and the same with LeBron. And I think that our, our, our young men and women need to see that they can be part of that. And I think they would also, that magazine would probably get way more advertising because they wouldn't get necessarily just cosmetic lines and clothes, but they would get Chase, 
Uh, they would get into it, right? They would get other things. I think it's just a smart thing to do. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know why necessarily I haven't been on there because um, there's a million people like us three in the room that we see the behind the scenes. Maybe it goes back to that systemic thing we were talking about in the past where they weren't used to putting African-Americans on the top because they said, hold on, slow down, man. Don't put me on there. I don't want to do it. I don't want too much attention. Mm. I mean, we only quietly heard of Robert Smith two, three years ago. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a fact. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's other, you know, I'm, I, I'm fortunate enough, enough to be in a group. Uh, there is about 60 versions of us in that room. There's uh, Ken Chanel, Robert Smith, and there's other there's other people, Robert Smith size, that nobody knows. Uh, the right people know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but forget me, I think that, you know, uh, I think that the I think that the African American inspired publications uh, should just highlight more of people like like Ursula, you know the, the you know IBM uh, CEO. I think that I think the more they I, they got to find a way to do that because our kids want to emulate what they see the most of, and it's very hard, right? You know. I can sit there on Shark Tank all I want. You guys can do Earn Your Leisure all you want. You can see it. And if you listen to Earn Your Leisure podcast, you probably will listen to you. You definitely listen to every podcast and you may listen to one a couple of times. But if you hear a song, you know, you're going to listen to that 10 times a day. And that song, uh, as country music and, and rap music is always the voice of the people, that song is a young man or woman reflecting on what they are dealing with in life. And nobody it, nobody can judge them for saying this is right or wrong. And that may often have a lot of elements that are not in the best interest of a child to want to aspire to. Yeah. So it, we have to be very intentional about the way that we try to <laughs> like you do it, like you do it on your leisure. We have to be intentional about the way we try to curve the discussion. I think. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you. Yeah. I'd man. like to forgive Chauncey in advance uh, <laughs> yeah. for making us wait three yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for 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 creating a mold and for creating a platform for us to aspire to look to be right. So if there isn't a Damon John that comes from hip hop and Hollis Queens, there's a sense to business. Who knows if there is two young men that can create earn your leisure. So I want to just personally thank you. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you for highlighting this. And um, I wouldn't be here without all those greats who who we will never hear the names of, who have sacrificed their lives and various other things for us to be able to even be free, right? To have this discussion that, that people will never have heard of who, you know, you know, we, you know we stand on the shoulder of giants. And I know we can appreciate that, so. Thank you. And thank you, everybody who listens. And, uh, man, thank you for keep supporting entrepreneurship. Love what you did uh, out there with uh, all this thing in Atlanta. What was it called? Invest Fest. Woo! Heard 20,000. We, we, need, we need you there next year. Uh, absolutely. I love what Steve's <laughs> doing. I, by the way, when I was talking about my book, please, if you're a celebrity or a bank or whoever you are or whatever the case is, please compete with me. Get another financial book out. It was the number one book on Amazon for 24 hours. That means more books. I don't even, if you get anything, it has a pamphlet in it, it has instructions. I sold more books than everything that existed in the planet, 24 hours. Come be with me. Yo, put out more stuff, right? It's a party. Let's, sh let's show up to the party. Yeah, everybody's invited. Let's All do right. it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for rocking with us. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.